Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing some additional work on our chase cam and uh, really cleaning some things up. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't really satisfied with the way the chase cam was working and it was really kind of bugging me and so I spent a little time today working some things out and I, I got things working pretty well. I'm pretty satisfied with it and I'm excited uh, to go ahead and put this code into place. Um, I think it makes a big difference. And the more I feel like these mechanics of the game are are fixed, um, the cameras and whatnot, um, the better I'll feel about putting some objects in and actually get some, some gameplay prototypes. So I'm hoping by the middle to end of next week we'll have some objects in the game and some cool particle effects and, and start doing some, some fun stuff. So, well, this is fun too, but, you know, something that we can actually play with. Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to do is, and I'm not sure how this is going to work out because this isn't something that I that I tested, but I'm going to take the chase cam and I'm going to move it up to where the ball actually is. And I'm going to do the same thing with the aiming camera. I'm going to see how that works out. Um, I just want that when you aim at a certain spot, the ball is going to fly directly from where you are, where your the camera is located, rather than being set back a little bit. So um, <clears throat> let's go over to the code because I think there's a couple of places in the code that we'll want to uh, change the location. And this is this is kind of where I haven't been doing a very good job of it, but where if we had these things in a settings file, then we wouldn't have to worry about this we could just go in and make a change in one spot and be done with it um, I think this is on the on inner frame yeah okay so the chase cam we're moving to there so let's put that to zero so instead of being 10 units back we're gonna put it exactly the, where the ball is I'm not sure how this code is gonna work where I have the chase cam looking at the spot that it's on but we'll see so we'll save and we will uh, compile. Okay, so the next thing that um, that I did was, uh, this is going to be for the chase cam. So let's open up the chase cam AI model and let's go into on enter frame. So one thing that I did, you'll notice here is, um, and, I, and I, again, this is something I haven't done a very good job on, but I added some documentation. So what you want to do when you're coding is you want to put in lots of comments so you can remember what you're doing and kind of organize the code better. So I went through and I added some comments in here um, as I was working on it earlier so I could kind of identify what I'm doing. Um, and there's also some things I found in my code that we weren't really taking a look at um, how to make things robust and so we're not doing a lot of error checking so at one of the future videos um, we'll go back while the code base is still pretty small and we'll we'll make some of those changes okay so <clears throat> um, the first thing I wanted to do um, gosh it's kinda hard to explain some of the thought processes I had but basically I wanted the camera to react so that um, if the ball was within a certain range to the chase camera that it, the chase camera wasn't necessarily going to be moving it was it would just maybe rotate to follow the ball so um, but when it gets to 10 units away from the ball or greater then the camera is going to go ahead and update its position to chase the ball and I, I wanted to do that because as you notice sometimes when the balls you know making some of these um, um, ricochets or bounces where it starts to come back at the camera there's a lot of swinging the, the camera's going all over the place and there's just a lot of motion so in order to do that um, I started adding some different stuff in here and one of the things that I did was um, I added a uh, a distance so that there's a way to get the distance to an object so that's through the object class distance get distance to object 
and you put in we're gonna do from the camera which is this object that we're dealing with and then as you remember in this um, AI we had set up uh, you can't see it because it's off the screen here but over here there's this target um, so that's what we're going to be finding the distance to is the the target of the chase cam okay so we have a distance variable and let's go ahead and there's going to be some more stuff that I'll need, but let's go ahead and code that up right now so that we're using that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this this um, if conditional into a couple of different pieces. So we're going to throw in an else if and we're going to say if the distance is less than oh gosh, less than 10. That's going to go ahead and, and do this code. So basically anytime, oh, you know what? We don't want less than 10. We want greater than 10. So anytime it gets, the ball gets out of range, then the, the camera is going to um, move to, to follow up with it. Um, now the other thing that I, that I thought about, um, and I mentioned it a couple of times before, that's the video gets kind of choppy. And the choppiness ended up being because as the ball gets to low velocities, there's a lot of variation in the vectors um, that represent velocity. And since we're using those to, to figure out our direction that the ball is moving in, um, since that moves around quite a bit, then it looks like it's choppy, but what's happening is the camera's jerking around um, to try and match that. So the other thing I wanted to do was use, um, we're going to limit how much the camera moves based on the speed. Um, so in order to do that, um, I needed to find, I found a, a, you know, I created a variable called speed. And all we have to do is we take, this is a, one of those math function calls to a vector. Um, and it's the vector length. As you remember in our discussion about vectors, the there's the direction and the magnitude. And the magnitude represents, say, the speed. And, and the direction represents the direction the ball's going in. And together you get velocity. So all we're going to do is we're going to, and I have it down here where the um, velocity is the Vx, Vy, and Vz. So we will do that to get the speed. Now in order to do that, that means we're going to have to move this up there so that those variables exist when we go to use them. Okay, so we have that in place. So now that we have the speed, we also want to throw a clause in here that if the speed, we're only going to make these updates if the speed is greater than five. So we'll throw an and statement in there. So we're going to do these updates if the speed's greater five than five and the distance is greater than 10. Um, and see how that works out. And you know what, I forgot we want to then, because if we're doing if, then we need then. So. Okay, now let's take a look to see what else we need to do. Um, okay, so the other thing that we need to do is let's throw in, we need to define what's going to happen if the speed is less than 5 or the distance is less than 10. So let's throw um, an else in here. And what we want to do for that is um, all I want it to do, well, first of all, let's look at this. Let's let's go back here. Sorry. Um, so this translate to. So basically, this is where the camera is moving to a new position. Um, one of the things that I thought that we would do um, a little differently is I want to put the camera up. So I don't want it resting on the ground when the ball's on the ground. I want to put it up a little bit so that we've got it kind of an up uh, an angle from above. So let's throw in um, for our y value, let's do y plus two here, um, just so it has a little bit of an overhead view. And let's save that. Now, if if the speed is less than five or the distance is less than 10, all we wanna do is we just want to rotate the camera to look at the ball. So all I'm gonna do is copy and paste these two things. Um, and I'll tell you why I'm copying the translate to because um, when I tested this what happens is 
um, sometimes the the camera gets kind of pushed into the floor or onto the floor or whatever and so if if I didn't put this translate to and put the Y plus 2 here in this particular um, condition then the camera had a tendency to kind of sit on the floor so this is to pop the camera up now the other thing that I did because I only wanted to I don't care about the X and Z I don't want to actually move the camera I just want it to go um, up so the other thing is um, I created another um, so we had this X, Y, and Z that represented the position of the camera. I created another one down here, same thing, X, Y, and Z. The difference is that in this conditional, rather than it being based on a vector, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get the tra current translation of the camera. Um, so this is the, the current position. So we're going to do, this is the camera, so H cam, and we're doing the global space. So that gives us the, the current position of the camera. So then when we translate, we're just going to take the X and we're going to take the Z and we're going to take, um, instead of doing the Y, because we don't want the current location of the camera, we're going to change this into a different value. Since we want it to be two units above where the target is, we're going to take this target Y value and we're going to put it right there. So I hope this isn't getting too confusing, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking where the, the the ball is and I'm moving the camera up two units so that it's it's up high and looking down at the um, at the ball. Now as you notice we had originally defined the target X, Y, and Z within this branch, the conditional. We're now accessing it out here in another branch so in order to accommodate that we are going to cut out that piece of code and we will move it up up here outside the conditional so that it is available everywhere and I think that is it oh the other thing I wanted to do is it seemed to work better if I change the factor here to one so when it actually goes to look at it there's an instantaneous movement to look at the ball um, because at that point it's going at a fairly slow velocity um, it's just seemed to work better. So a lot of these factors here, um, it was just trial and error. A lot of what I did was trial and error. Um, you know, the two units up, um, I may change that. Uh, the 10 units back behind the ball, that might change. Um, so a lot of these things, we're just kind of tweaking it and seeing how it would work out. So let's hit Control S to save, F7 to compile. And let's see if I got it right. Okay, so here we are, and what we're seeing is we're seeing the other camera. Let's switch over to the runtime mode so we don't have to see the other camera. So the idea is that we were going to be able to aim, right? So let's try aiming down a little bit. We'll pop the ball out. So here goes the chase cam. And you'll see that when the velocity gets to a certain point, it doesn't actually continue to follow the ball. It just lets the ball trail off into the distance. Uh, which is kind of, uh, I kind of like the effect. Now, what I am finding is that the editor has tends to be a little more jerky than um, the game itself. So when I load this into a browser, it tends to run a little bit better. So I don't know if it's just my sh machine doing the recording and everything, but it does look a lot better when I load it into the browser. Um, but you notice, so now we're getting some better, um, some better response from the chase cam. It's not popping outside the walls as much because it's, um, you know, once the ball kind of settles down, the camera doesn't have to follow it as much. I mean, it still goes outside the walls, but I think I'm okay with with the functionality of the camera right now. What may change a little bit as we get further into the game. Um, and boom, there you go. So we're off the level. One thing that I do want to add is that because we had times like these, now that we can aim the camera and the ball is just going to fall indefinitely, um, I added two keys in here that I didn't document in a video. Um, they're real simple to do, so it's not a big deal, and I can show you that later. But if you hit Escape, it's going to kill the game. If you hit 